Hello friends, welcome back to chapter 14 of the Mosquito Build. As promised last week or last chapter, we're gonna mount the nacelles to the wing. Before we do that, uh, we have to double check a couple parts also. We need to take care of the top of the wing because I overlooked this, but I have to do some pre-painting before we can actually mount the wing to the fuselage. If you missed any previous chapters, you can still click on the links and you can see the whole build. If you still don't have a Mosquito and want one, it's available at our shop. Just go to our website or click on the link. Let's get to work. Well, as you can see here, we have both the nacelles lined up. It's actually the wheel well. We're going to put the pieces in place on both sides. I am not planning to open any hatches or any doors except for the cockpit door, but anything else is going to be closed up. So the only thing visible is going to be the wheel wells. And I might have overlooked that a little bit or through caution to the wind, but I just realized I did not paint the insides of the wheel well. Now that is by itself no big deal. I will deal with it whenever we come to the painting part of the airplane. I'll work around it. Probably going to cost me a little bit more work, but it's no big deal. Other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. Also, as you can see here, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, this part actually is visible. It's part of the cockpit that you can see through the canopy. So I need to do this cockpit green and also put the radios in place, which I'm going to assemble during this, this chapter. After that, it's basically time to mount the whole contraption onto the fuselage. But for now, I'm going to deal with both of engine nacelles and wheel wells. This is one of the last big parts we need to do before we can assemble everything. Let's start with taking the tape off and sand the joints. Per uh, Tamiya's instructions, most of the parts that you see are duplicate. I think it's visible, as you can see, there is a left and a right. This is the only time during the construction that you have to pay a little attention because some of the parts they especially where the mounts are like here for the wheel doors you have to pay a little bit of special attention so you don't mix them up because they will fit some will fit on the other side but then it's not gonna work out when you try to hang the wheel doors in place other than that pretty straightforward here we go we got a very very nice tight joint here so it's not going to take much to to sand this just go over it gently this is also the part where you can have like a tri grit or uh, an extra fine sanding stick just to eliminate extra scratches or unnecessary scratches you, you made with the medium but again it's not 100 percent necessary what i do recommend and i also mentioned this in previous chapter is the multi-purpose pad for any shavings you might have or flash or little fibers that accumulated while sanding. This will take them off. It will also make everything smooth. It's uh, not rocket science, but it helps a lot to have one or a piece on your table. Let's test fit it. As you already can tell, it's not going to be any problem and I don't know if you can see it here. The fit is absolutely phenomenal on both sides. You're hardly going to have any seam or there is no filler needed. You just have to glue it in place and uh, without any problem. I keep mentioning it, how well of a job that Tamiya did with this kit and I'm sure with other kits too. But this is absolutely top engineering from their part. The whole assembly, although it's a complicated build, there's a lot of pieces and I already skipped half of them because I did, like I mentioned before, I did not want to open any hatches or doors so I could get away with eliminating a lot of pieces uh, like the gun, the gun compartment or the, the gun bay, the bomb bay. Those things I just left out because I don't want to open the, the hatches but anything else anything that seems to be complicated or the, the fit is so well engineered that uh, it's just a, a breeze to do this i'm gonna check my instructions real quick i don't forget anything as you can see here there are two and we built those things in the previous chapters there are also the two arms landing gear retracting arms i'm going to leave these off until the final assembly or even after painting. So these things here, I'm gonna put these away for a while because they will uh, interfere or with the rest of the painting or, or the build. I'm gonna leave the wheels off and the retraction arms. But other than that, I think it's ready to 
mount the two nacelles and wheel wells to the bottom wing. Just to show, I didn't put any glue on the top of the edges of the nacelles. I'm just gonna have some plastic weld flow into the seam here because since it's such a tight fit, I don't have to do anything else. Let's do this with the other one. There you have it. That's all it takes. I'm gonna mount the discs in place, the front disc of the engine. So that will incorporate eventually the side panels. Again, this is something I overlooked, but it's no big deal to do it right now. So let's do that. Meantime, the whole thing can dry. Starting with the left uh, engine cooling tank. This is the left engine colon tank, put that in place. It seems to be a little bit of a challenge here, uh, probably something I maybe overlooked. Okay, now I'm going to repeat this for the right side. This is the right side of the engine cooling tanks. So it's basically the same procedure as on the left side. There are some more hoses basically or, or pipe work, however you call it. But again, I'm not gonna glue that in place because, because I'm gonna cover everything up. Now I must admit that these engines deserve to be on display. There are so many parts. I don't think you have to do anything super detailing to enhance these engines. They, if you build them straight out of the box, they, they just look the part. Maybe you can add a copper wire here and there, but even that I don't think it's necessary, they're just a piece of art, but in my case, I'm just going to cover them up with the panels. I'm not going to be too worried to get the detail in place now. However, since there is always, you know, we have these chapters and in between, for the ones that really want to shine and update their airplane and want to open every hatch, this is the time to do it. So until the next chapter, maybe the time that you can use during the week or just to, to detail and to do whatever is necessary to make your model uh, just the way you like it. Let's just first test fit it. So I'm gonna put this part on the side for a little bit and I'm gonna see what detail needs to be prepared to mount on the top of the wing. As you can see here on both sides, that's where the whole flap contraption or assembly is to be mounted. We'll do that after the radios. But for now, 
I'm gonna let the whole thing dry and make sure that I didn't miss anything. All in all, when you look at the wing, it's a pretty impressive piece just by itself. Now for to do the last detail, as far as the cockpit is concerned, I'm gonna prepare the radios. I'll try to do as much as assembling as I can, but they need to be pre-painted before I can mount them. I'm gonna take care of this and I get that out of the way and then we'll come back and do the, the flap assembly so I can at least put those in place in the wing. But first of all, I need to take care of this. These of course are part that, or these assemblies of the radios, they need to be pre-painted. By the time we come back next time, I'll have everything ready so we can paint these before we mount them. During the next chapter, we'll do a little bit of touching up on the cockpit, make sure that everything is lined up and of course paint the area between the wings and mount the radios. The radios also come with some photo -bitch part. I'm going to get our trusted rubber block back and put that back into focus. So now we have to do a little bit of photo etch. Got our rubber block here and I explained in the previous chapter what the, the characteristics are and what the all the, the uses are that you can use it for. for. Just gonna cut this part out. The photo etch itself, it's very easy to, to remove it from, from the fret by just simply putting a scalpel or an X-Acto knife in it and just barely, you, even, you don't even have to really push get some slight pressure on there and the part will come loose. So this is actually a very good a very good uh, tool to have when you, once you're working with Photovich. As you can see here, uh, Tamiya of course provided uh, crease lines where to bend the Photovich, which makes it a lot simpler. But sometimes it's a little, a little sturdy and you're under risk of warping it a little, of, of bending it a little bit out of shape. So again, with a straight edge will work, but since you have the block available or on your desk, I always like to just avoid any further problem. Since it has straight edges and it gives a little, it's the perfect tool to bend photo edge too. So you get like a, almost a perfect straight edge, at least a 90 degree angle. You have to do the other way. Of course, that might be a little bit difficult, but at least you can do the initial break and then gently move it into place. So here we go. This fits here, and again, as with everything else, perfect fit. Now, I'm not gonna glue this on top just yet. I'm just gonna wait until I got everything ready to paint, make sure that I can at least paint this part here before we mount that bed. It's not going to be a big problem. We can paint those two pieces separate. Just for now, I'm going to put them on the side and then get them back when we get around to painting. That is basically it for all the detail that is needed to complete the gap in between. Because as you can see, I'm not going to really put it on there because I don't like to do that much. But this area is going to be visible through the canopy so we have to detail and paint this and I should have done it before but again with everything else going on I overlooked it but you can already tell that it's going to be a very very nice kit and a very nice platform to paint I'm really looking forward to painting and weathering the hell out of this this mosquito. We still have to deal with a, a couple small things like for instance the in-between section and then also I'm gonna add the panels and the flaps to it also at the back the tail and the rudder but for now I'm gonna make the right and left flap assemblies. So this is what we're gonna do right now we have the whole flap assembly 
And that is one of the major components that we need to incorporate before we can do anything else. So I'm going to prepare these, not necessarily mount them, but I just want them prepared. I just have to glue all the and, and work the joints and all. I just want to have them ready. Okay, we're at the assembly of the flaps here. I got my right and my left flaps here. I also, if you look closer to the instruction sheet, Tamiya gives you the option of mounting the flaps in a straight position or in a droop position, like when the hydraulics are gone. So I prefer to do that. The only different part is the shaft. As you can see, uh, one has a couple nicks in there, you know, like a little curved one, and the other one is straight. So I uh, decided to go with this because I, I think when an airplane is parked, most of the time it loses, especially the old airplanes, they're losing uh, hydraulics. Usually the flaps and the control surfaces, they are in a droop position. So I thought it would look pretty cool to build them that way. So I'm not going to bother with the straight ones. I'm just going to mount these parts in place. Now everything else stays the same. It's just a different angle that those flaps are going to be mounted once on the wing. Let's glue this together. Also, it's always good to have a little bit of uh, masking tape. Uh, just when you are working with joints or halves, it's always nice to have some tape in place so it doesn't split. Another thing, the only disadvantage mounting the flaps in a droop position, uh, some of the stuff will be visible. Like for instance here, you can see there is a seam line. I'm not sure how it's going to work out but there is a possibility that this is going to be exposed. If you do stuff like that, make sure that you cover the seam line because I think I have to fill this up. Maybe not if I'm lucky, but if it's visible, you need to make sure that you eliminate the seam line. So let's hope once everything, the whole contraption is put together, that nothing is visible and that it just takes, that it's covered by, by something else. I already pre-cleaned some of these parts, so the only thing I need to do is some gluing. Another thing I mentioned in previous chapters is usually when you deal with a plastic model and you have to glue the wings together, that at the back part, uh, especially on the control sur surfaces where it's extra thin, uh, most brand names, it's a little clunky in the back. You know, it's a, you get like a, a thick seam line and most of the time you have to help it, like dremel it away or sand it uh, away. Uh, with the Mia, you don't have to do that. They, once you put the two halves together, it's still a very, very thin edge. So that's a plus too, that you don't have to worry about that. There you have it. In the meantime, once it's dry, I would suggest, especially in this case, in this case, to maybe do a little bit of a, like a bit of super glow over it, just to make sure that once you sand it, that you don't have any seam lines visible. I don't know what the outcome is going to uh, will be, but I have to double check this seam line 
and these seam lines so there might be a problem I don't think this is going to be a problem because it's going to be obscured by the nacelle or the wheel well but this side might I probably have to do some extra sanding or filling on there so we'll deal with that when the time comes so for now I'm just going to let it dry and do the left side Squadron's plastic well in this case works real well, although it dries fast, but it's almost like a like a super glue. In this case, I forgot to clean this one. See, this is always make sure you when you clean something you do it thoroughly and not get into a into a situation like this where you add glue to the part and then you you basically come across a piece that is not being cleaned thoroughly and then you already have glue on them but in this case it was on the on the on the good side so let me do this so i was saying that the plastic cement it's it's almost like a little bit like a super glue it dries very fast although it again once you apply it you have to act real fast but once you put the piece in position and you put it on there it immediately sticks okay here we go no, it's not correct all right, here we go. So Im immediately it grips and it adheres. Just to be safe, put a little bead on the, on the front before we tape it. The same thing on the back. Add some extra glue. What expedites the build is the really good fit and perfect fit of the Tamiya quality. You don't have to bother with putty or any kind of super glue or bending stuff into shape. It's just a perfect fit so that eliminates a lot of the, of the time and also a lot of the frustration. There is hardly any frustration at all during this build. It's just a lot of pieces. As far as, uh, as fit, I can't say it enough, this is a joy to build. There you have it. So I'm gonna leave it at this for this chapter. As I mentioned before, till the next chapter in between for the guys that want a super detail or the ones that wanna open the gun bay or the bomb bay, now is the time to do it. I'm just gonna let these dry, prepare them so I can mount them into the fuselage. In the meantime, I will also will prepare, like we talked about, do some pre-painting. And I'll show you guys in the next chapter for the radios and then mount the whole wing to the fuselage. So guys, that's it for now. Uh, as you can see, uh, nice chunk of plastic and it's only gonna get better uh, going forward. Next time we'll do a little bit of uh, last minute detail and uh, other than that, that should be it. Now, don't forget the help desk. If I wasn't clear about something, uh, just go to our, our website, that's cordon.com, click on the help desk and ask me a question. Uh, and I see if I can answer it or help you. So that's it for now. Uh, Jeff Fee here, signing off. If you like what we have to say and you want to see more of this, please subscribe to Squadron TV or make your friends subscribe or even your puppy. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Ready? Ready? Okay. Hello, friends. Uh, welcome back to the. For, for now. Uh, when, please kill me. Please, please, Mark. Oh, Jesus, Louise. It's not the fuselage, it's the wing. <laughs>